Uh, I'm Hong Xiaoyang from uh, Yahoo, uh, and uh, today I would like to talk about our work uh, has been done for this large-scale uh, CVR prediction um, for on our own platform, demand side platform called Brightro. So this is a collaboration work with my colleagues Quan, uh, Angers, and Chun. Okay, so uh, um, this is the roadmap roadmap of my talk. In the first part, I will briefly describe the background of our uh, demand side platform on this display advertising. So this is uh, maybe a quite a, a new topic to everyone sitting here. However, it's kind of a money uh, horse uh, generation house for all the IT companies. So. Um, so every day, and it's a very challenging task as uh, every, uh, very challenging task as well. So every day we have to receive like tens of billions of bid requests uh, uh, every day per day uh, on our demand side platform, and uh, our modeling has to uh, issue a response in a real time bidding environment within milliseconds to make a relatively smart decision uh, in order that we can make money. Um, in the second part, so I, I will help you go through the modeling framework component in my in my paper or in our uh, in our in our work. In the first part, we design a novel uh, natural language modeling specifically tailored for the semantic inputs for the conversion rate prediction. So currently, there is a uh, really uh, many uh, popular tools. Uh, like word to vector that is uh, designed by Google. However, in practice, we found some uh, limitations for their work and uh, make some improvements. So the second component of our uh, modeling framework is the so-called uh, a Bayesian transfer learning model to dynamically transfer the knowledge from source to the future target. So there's, uh, uh, for example, in the last year's KDD, um, in uh, in uh, uh, Another big player in the DSP, demand side platform, they also designed uh, some framework for this uh, transfer learning. However, it's not in the Bayesian framework, it's still in the frequentist statistics. And uh, they also indeed have some limitations as well. So I will also talk in detail in my, in, in my presentation. In the third part, um, so because there are two components in our proposed uh, modeling framework. Um, however, you can definitely uh, use two-step modeling framework. You first estimate your semantic inputs and then include your semantic inputs as some you know, um, covariates or features in your modeling framework. That's a two-step, called two-step modeling framework. However, you cannot uh, automatically uh, improve simultaneously in your, uh, in your modeling framework as a whole. So in the third component, we connect uh, the part one and the part two that I just uh, described briefly uh, through a novel probabilistic generative framework um, to uh, help these two parts to uh, you know, feed back to each other and improve simultaneously. Uh, as I just mentioned, because every day we receive like tens of billions bid requests. Uh, that's more than the population in the whole, in the, in, the, in, in this earth, right? And we have to respond within milliseconds. Uh, so the, the updating algorithm is really critical. So we also design an automatically new updating rule with adaptive regularization using the so-called stochastic gradient Monte Carlo uh, to support the really efficient and, and effective uh, updating algorithm for our modeling. And in the last part, I will describe briefly using our modeling framework, what kind of benefits or the improvements that we can achieve. So what is the display advertising? So basically speaking, um, so, uh, so Yahoo uh, is also a publisher. So we have all these inventories. So you can see this. Uh, so I show this. Uh, um, you have all these uh, you know, um, places that you can, play, you can place your ads. And when a user uh, started browsing uh, this uh, website, uh, immediately, um, you know, the publisher will send uh, some bid request uh, to the SSP if there is exist. SSP called the uh, is an abbreviation of this uh, uh, supply side platform, which collects all these inventories that uh, they can show such uh, computational ad ads. And uh, sometimes there is a so-called uh, ad exchange between the SSP. Uh, and the demand side platform or DSP, that's where we are currently working. So ad exchange, you know, collect all these bid requests and send to different demand, uh, demand side platforms or DSPs. Uh, all these bid requests, for example, is a combination of this uh, content, context of the publisher side information and some user information. Uh, and uh, this bit, uh, when the different DSPs received this different bid request, they will based on the different campaigns or the different advertisement they are currently you know, uh, serving and decide uh, um, a price or even they don't want to join in this uh, 
uh, dynamic uh, uh, auction at all. So once they send the different, uh, you know, uh, so this is called external auction. So when they send out the different prices for the specific bid request, um, then the ad exchange will use the or select the highest DSP with the highest bidding price. However, we use the second price. That's the so-called second price auction. So in basically speaking, this is kind of a really complicated framework. However, basically speaking, so uh, the publisher side uh, send out this uh, publisher information and user information to the different demand side platform. And the different demand side platform, uh, based on the different ads that they are serving, and based on the user quality or the publisher quality, they will decide a dynamic price to bid. And the winning, uh, winning DSP will have the opportunity to show the ads here, for example, like this. Uh, um, this uh, uh, naked, uh, uh, sorry, uh, they show this uh, uh, display ads in this, uh, in this area. Okay. So first, uh, as you can just, uh, you can just uh, saw, there are so much uh, um, semantic information related uh, with, our, uh, with our data sets. For example, like the publisher information you just uh, see. Uh, this is Yahoo, uh, you know, uh, homepage. So some people, they are, what kind, um, like what's the context related uh, uh, to this homepage or the publisher site information. And also there are some user browsing or searching history as well. So word to vector is a really popular and a powerful tool for this uh, word approximating uh, prox uh, processing. However, in reality, uh, we play around with their tools and found uh, that uh, uh, the distances uh, learned from the word vectors are quite sometimes are really not comparable if the delta vectors are not in the same, direction, uh, same directions learned from these uh, uh, vectors uh, from this uh, two word to vector. And uh, especially in our formulation, each of the word that is collected can be naturally uh, enforced into this uh, so-called uh, rectangular lattice, or naturally each word is related to three dimensions. The first dimension is the user. For example, the user search or uh, you know, uh, search history or browsing history. And the publisher side, for example, um, because we know the bid request, which publisher side this bid request comes from. And we know the context information related to that publisher. Uh, and third, the advertiser information. For example, sometimes the advertiser, uh, like Nike, they started uh, uh, like a, a shoe campaign. So we know, um, you know, we, this word is related to. So each word can naturally force into this uh, rectangular lattice, uh, three dimensions, user, publisher, and advertiser. So uh, this, if we can actually include uh, this uh, three dimension rectangular uh, information, it can actually help us remove the ambiguity for measuring with the small vectors uh, and the lattices and make the distances more comparable. So, um, so actually, uh, the, the second bullet tells us this. Uh, so this is the uh, LV is the objective function uh, comes from the skip gram, uh, you know, uh, objective func uh, function from the word to vector. And uh, uh, the one one more thing we do here is that uh, uh, we let the uh, VW here. If you see the last uh, last line there, VW here is the latent vectors for this word W. So we enforce this uh, uh, three dimensional vectors in this prior information. So we let this VW, instead of just drawn from a Gaussian distribution, we let them drawn from this uh, you know, three-dimensional tensor factorization. And each of this cell is itself is a, is a, is a modeling part. And uh, so, um, but um, you know, we actually drawn, so this, uh, um, this weights here, this pi here is, can be decomposed in three dimensions because each word is related to three dimensions. And we let, it, uh, we let the weights can also be decomposed into these three dimensions as well, and uh, you know, uh, puts the and and puts the weights, the different weights for the three different dimensions. For example, the, like the advertiser dimension, the publisher dimension weights, and uh, the user dimension weights. Uh, and uh, finally, got the the joint uh, weights for each of the word. And we use this beta prior here because uh, uh, the prior mean focus on the the decomposition of each of the dimension weights. Uh, the next uh, modeling component is the Bayesian transfer learning here, uh, as I just said, uh, because this is uh, regarding the conversion rate prediction. Uh, however, uh, the conversion rate itself is indeed very low. It's kind of like a one out of one million probably uh, for real, some really challenging campaigns. So that means 
uh, your positive labels is just one. However, your negative labels can be one million. And uh, that's, that's kind of uh, your positive and negative ratio of the samples that you collected. So the, uh, the positive labels are really sparse. And we would like to design a framework uh, that can dynamically transfer what you have learned in the past. So transfer learning is particularly useful uh, in such scenario uh, when, the, when your labels are really not efficient. Uh, and uh, you know, in the 2015 year, I think some other DSPs, they also do a really good job in uh, using this uh, transfer learning for this uh, CVR prediction. However, uh, their setup um, is not that easy for incremental updating and they could not fit very well in the, in the real situation because they only have like uh, one target uh, and one source. But in reality, because every day uh, you or once you, uh, you you retrain your model, so you have the different timestamps. So we don't necessarily have only one source and one target, but we actually have a series of them. So in that sense, how can you dynamically transform? You know, once this time step passed, you can consider that as a source. How can you dynamically transfer all your past sources to your future target? That's not a, an easy job in the current uh, dynamic transfer learning framework. But in the Bayesian setup, you can actually do this uh, in a really efficient and effective way. So this is, a, uh, this is kind of a, a due part bridge to, uh, uh, to bridge the, what we just proposed uh, for this uh, um, semantic learning, which improves the word to vector by including this uh, three-dimensional structure that naturally exists in our framework, and also the, uh, the Bayesian modeling framework. So in the first, in the first bullet here, uh, it's very, very likely to the LDA there. However, uh, you know, uh, we, we optimize uh, the, the skip gram uh, objective function from the, from the word to vector. In the second step uh, is actually regarding the Bayesian transfer learning. So this uh, beta S here is the source priors that we learned from all the past sources. And uh, uh, you know, the, the T here is the target in the future. So in the, in the last line is our jointly uh, uh, objective function there. Though it seems quite daunting here, however, because we design kind of a very efficient stochastic gradient descent Monte Carlo algorithm, we can decompose, you know, it's a, like conditionally independent. So conditionally on all some parameters, you can update the left parameters in a very efficient way. Uh, so I will skip here, uh, skip this part here. However, uh, as I just mentioned, because it's an MC uh, Bayesian algorithm, so you can update. Um, naturally, it has this uh, generative framework. So given all the left parameters, you can update some partial parameters and iteratively, and you will get a convergent uh, results um, globally. Um, okay, so, uh, so now we come to the uh, experimental results. So uh, the first thing, as I, um, because uh, we use this uh, semantic processing, we, we improve the word to vector. And we want, we want to see indeed uh, that uh, including such a uh, user's interest transfer is very critical in our framework. So we first uh, focus, uh, our first experiments focus on studying the effects by including the semantic information that we learned from the user's search and browsing history. So here, we use a three by three factorial design to examine the modeling. The first factorial design is the semantic information. So first, we want to see if indeed uh, this, semant this semantic information is helpful in our this uh, such high dimensional, uh, you know, extremely sparse and uh, very time uh, sensitive uh, framework. You have to respond within milliseconds. The second design uh, factor, uh, factorial design factor, is uh, whether or not. We should use the transfer learning. For example, like the current uh, uh, Google, they use the so-called FTRL, or Microsoft, they use the VW model. It's not transfer learning at all, but they are quite successful. So we want to see if the transfer learning, indeed, uh, so you learned from your past and transfer in the future, and or you know transfer from other campaigns, indeed, uh, helps your uh, prediction of the CVR. Uh, the third design represents the uh, coefficient distribution transfer. So the last year's KDD, uh, they already designed such a transfer learning framework. However, it's a frequentist methodology. It's not Bayesian methodology. So they transfer the point estimators of each of the coefficients. So if the Bayesian transfer learning indeed, uh, you know, if you transfer the distribution, indeed uh, helps the overall framework. And uh, our conclusion here is, so I will not go too into the detail, but we compare with all the competitors that I just mentioned. But our, uh, you know, one of the conclusion, main conclusion here is that uh, transfer learning variant um, is more important compared to the distribution variant in practice. That means 
uh, compared to the improvement uh, induced uh, by the by the transfer learning is more important uh, compared to if you are uh, you know use the either the point estimators or either use the distribution uh, and the semantic information transfer is the most important of all. Uh, our next experiments, we show the transfer uh, sensitivity of the different source campaigns. So because in reality, all these campaigns are mixed together, and we don't know uh, if that campaign source information is reliable or not. So uh, we actually uh, you know, mixed all 50 campaigns from the different categories and uh, jointly learn and uh, let the model to choose if that information needs to be transferred from one campaign to another or from the, uh, from the previous to in the future. And our conclusion here is that uh, using the Bayesian transfer learning is more smartly to help you discriminate um, the, the more useful information. Okay, so that's my talk. Thank you.